Welcome to the secret lab on Zira, the golden sting. We have an insect assassin that is dressed very nicely and ready to turn creatures into bugs, which is kind of creepy. So, but anyway, let's cover our commander. So we've got one colorless black, red, and a green. Um, flying in haste. Whenever Zira attacks, put an egg counter on another target creature without an egg counter on it. Um, when that creature dies, if it had an egg counter on it, draw a card and create a 1-1 black insect creature token uh, with flying. So one thing to kind of keep in mind with that ability is that uh, we don't have to just target our opponent's creatures. We can target our own creatures. So if we're running sack outlets or something like that, um, we can put one of those X counters on our creatures, uh, have it die, and then we get an insect and a card draw. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, now, as far as the creative in a commander like this, what are we looking at? This is full creativity on this. There's a lot of different ways you can take this stack. Um, you can go insect tribal, you can go super friends, um, you can just go Jun two for one control with zero swinging in. You can build some sort of Voltron deck if you want to. Um, there's a lot of different ways to take this particular commander because with zero's ability, um, there is a bottleneck. You know, with zero's ability, it has to happen during the combat step. And so there's just not a lot of ways other than just kind of amplifying token production that you can make Zira shine outside of, you know, kind of shying away from that actual egg counter ability. So as far as your creativity goes, go wild, have fun with this. You're not really shoehorned into, I need to have X amount of cards in here. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can build it. Now, as far as the support goes, um, with the support, you're pretty much kind of wide open. Like I mentioned, you can build some sort of junk control deck and just not really have a lot of cards that care about either amping the production of these tokens or, you know, getting a lot of insects out there, whatever that may be. Um, you don't really have to have this super dedicated support deck to make sure that Zira can function because at the end of the day, just Zira out of the command zone attacking and putting an egg counter on there is exactly what you want to do so that does free you up for a lot of extra room in your deck and as far as the timing on a commander like this you know it's going to be right in the middle on the timing um, this is one of those commanders that you do want to get it down pretty early you don't want to just get it down and not have any sort of protection but if there's some times to where you can get down your commander and there you know maybe it's not good you're worried about some spot removal um, with the commander being the way that it is there's times where you can just kind of get out there and hope that zero sticks around until your next turn and if it does awesome you can start swinging in and uh, getting those egg counters on there so you don't really have to sequence it to where all right i have zero on the battlefield i have protection now we have to do this you know this ability is something that all right once we get it going uh we'll, we'll be happy but if something happens in the meantime then we can do something else whether it's ramping or kind of building up some of our resources now one of the fun ways that you can take zero is building insect tribal and that's going to start with some of your good insect uh i guess heavy hitters for the deck if you're going to call them that uh, we got crash of rhino beetles it's going to have trample and then it's going to get plus 10 plus 10 as long as you control 10 or more lands and if you're building an insect tribal deck i can't think of a better finisher or a crater hoof or insect hoof if you want to call it that uh, then a 1515 uh, rhino beetle. That's a lot of fun. Um, you also have access to Izoni. So with Izoni, let's say we get hit with a board wipe and we are building insect tribal. And when Izoni enters the battlefield, we get to create a bunch of insect tokens for each creature card in our graveyard. So if we're running some sort of dredge style deck or we're dumping cards into the graveyard, um, Izoni is going to give you access to a lot of insect tokens. And then also giant bug face. Uh, whenever giant bug face deals combat damage to a player, put a token that's a copy of it on the battlefield. So let's say that we swing in with Giant Bug Face, uh, we make combat damage, we get an extra copy of it. Next turn we swing in with two of them, those two make combat damage, now we have two more on the battlefield, so we have a total of four. Um, it is seven mana, it's going to be a target at the table, but if you're building Insect Tribal, man, that is a, uh, <laughs> that is a, fun, uh, that is a fun insect card right there. Um, you also have ways to kind of create insect tokens on the battlefield. So we have Beacon of Creation, Dragon Lord, uh, Dragon Layer Spider, and Hornet Queen. Uh, Be uh, Beacon of Creation, this is one of those cards that we are running a three-colored deck. In a mono green deck, it's awesome because you have a lot of forest in there, but still, you know, with it being... Being a, a tricolor deck, uh, once you go for Beacon of Creation, you know, being able to get in the neighborhood of, you know, four to five insect tokens on the battlefield for only four mana, that's pretty nice. So do watch your forest count if you run Beacon of Creation in there. Uh, there's also Dragon Layer Spider, so whenever an opponent casts a spell, we get an insect token. And then Hornet Queen. Hornet Queen is one of the best ways to bounce back from a board wipe. Let's say we get our entire board cleared. Uh, we go for Hornet Queen, we get four insect tokens out of the battlefield. With Death Touch, we are good to go. Um, one of the other ways to kind of really amplify a insect tribal deck is going to be shared animosity and so whenever a creature you control attacks it gets plus one for each other attacking creature that shares a creature type with it so if we're sh uh, attacking with 10 insect tokens uh, basically everybody's gonna get plus 10 plus zero and that's a wonderful way to turn all those one one insect tokens into something that is a very sizable threat um coat of arms 
is silly in a deck like this. If you're building a non-traditional tribal deck, a Coat of Arms is one of the best ways to really kind of amp up that deck. Now, do, you do need to keep this in mind, Coat of Arms, um, each creature on the battlefield, it's not just your creatures. So if you're playing against goblins, if you're playing against elves, um, everybody's going to get a bonus for everybody being on the battlefield. So that's something you do want to keep in mind. But if you want to use Coat of Arms as a finisher, you can certainly do that. Like I mentioned, if we have 10 insects on the battlefield, our Creatures are basically going to get plus 10, plus 10 from Coat of Arms just being down there. And then also, something flavorful like Triumph of the Hordes. Uh, creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1 and gain Trample and gain Infect until end of turn. Um, you're building an Insect deck. Insects are creepy. They win in alternative ways. So being able to have Triumph of the Hordes down to, you know, you may not be able to take the entire board state out, but at least having Triumph of the Hordes in your deck, you can take a couple different players out with those Insect tokens. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun ways to, uh, to kind of play the game. As far as the foundation of an insect deck, a lot of the, you know, one drop, two drop, three drops, there's some good options out there if you do end up going insect tribal. Um, Caustic Caterpillar is a wonderful way to keep artifacts and enchantments under line. Uh, Brain Maggot is going to allow you to kind of disrupt your opponent's hand, and with uh, Cruel Harpooner, um, it does have to fight a creature with flying, but if you get this on the battlefield, it enters the battlefield and choose up to one target creature with flying you don't control, it gets plus X plus zero until end of turn where X the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Then you get to have Harpooner fight that creature. So it is a little bit situational in spot removal, but hey, it's an insect that has spot removal. So if you're building insect tribal, why not give it a shot? Um, you also have cards like Caustic Wasp. Whenever it does combat damage to a player, you get to destroy target and artifact they control. Um, that's going to be a good thing to, you know, let's say we're just not getting a lot of zero action, being able to just kind of swing in with Caustic Wasp and really start taking out an artifacts on the battlefield. Um, that's going to be a good thing. Uh, with Bane of the Living, that's going to give you some access to some sort of board wipe. You do have to run it as a morph creature, but once it's turned up, you get that minus X, minus X until end of turn. And then Tuco Vigilante, uh, whenever it's turned up, you get to destroy target artifact or enchantment so um, there's probably not going to be a lot of morph down creatures so people are going to know that it is something that they probably don't want to see turned up so it probably will be a target at the battlefield but at least hey it's nice to have the access to that sort of removal in insects um you also have rust scarab uh, whenever it becomes blocked you get to destroy target artifact or enchantment defending player control so you can use rust scarab to kind of swing it at a planeswalker if they throw that uh, some sort of blockers in front of it uh, you can use that to destroy something of their uh, your opponents uh, with Distended men, uh, Mind Bender. Uh, whenever it enters the, or whenever you cast it, target opponent reveals their hand. You choose from it a non land card with a converted mana cost three or less and a card with converted mana cost four or greater. That player discards those cards. So uh, it does have the emerge ability for seven, which is really going to work out with our ability of having creatures on the battlefield. And if, especially if we're putting those egg counters on our own creatures, you can use that to sacrifice, get that Mind Bender out there. Uh, make your opponent discard some of their, you know, maybe some sort of spot removal or, or late game threat. Whatever that may be, you're going to have access to discard. And then with Caustic Crawler, whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, you may have target creature get minus one until end of turn. This is going to be one of your better insect removal creatures. Um, simply just being able to make land drops. You know, let's say we get Cultivate down. That's going to be a land entering the battlefield. Minus one, minus one. We make the land drop. That's another minus one, minus one. Um, you may not be able to take out a lot of the bigger creatures out there, but at least with Caustic Crawler, um, that's going to allow you to clean up some of the, you know, elves at the table, tokens at the table, whatever that may be. Now, as far as insect goes, uh, making tokens. We have access to a couple cool cards. There's going to be Crawling Infestation. Um, at the beginning of your upkeep, you're going to mill two cards. Then whenever one or more creature cards are put into your graveyard, uh, you get a 1-1 green insect creature token. It only hits once per turn, uh, but that is a really nice ability, being able to kind of get those insect tokens. Uh, Carrion is a wonderful way to sacrifice a creature. You do... You're going to sacrifice a creature and then put tokens equal to its power. They will be zero ones, but like we covered in the beginning of the video, if we have some sort of tribal bonus effect, um, the main thing is we just want insect bodies on the battlefield. And then with Crawling Sensation, uh, same thing, put the top two cards of your library. Whenever one or more lands are put into your graveyard, uh, you get an insect creature token on the battlefield. And that's something that if you're building a dredge deck, you can get a lot of insect tokens going uh, pretty quick that way. Uh, we have Hive Heart Shaman, which is a very... <laughs> when I was doing research for this deck i didn't know I, I forgot this card existed and when you look at the art that is some creepy art and i love it and this fits perfectly in an insect deck uh, whenever hive heart shaman attacks you may search your library for a basic card that doesn't share a land type with the land type you control put it on the battlefield then shuffle then for a six man activation create a one one insect token i uh, put x plus one counters on it where x is the number of basic land types among lands you control so basically you're gonna have a land search it's gonna grab an extra land for a lot of mana you can create a token but if you're going for a flavor theme 
Uh, there's no better human shaman to put in your deck than Hiveheart Shaman. Uh, Ant Queen is going to be a wonderful way to get this down and use that two mana mana sink to create those tokens. It's probably going to be one of the cheapest rates uh, to just pay two mana and get an insect token on the battlefield. There's a lot of times where you may have Ant Queen down and uh, before you untap, you just dump all your mana into Ant Queen and get a lot of insect tokens down. And then with Infestation Expert, enters the battlefield or attacks, so you get a 1-1 green insect creature token. Uh, then once we get the, uh, the Daybound ability, once Infestation Expert turns into a werewolf, if you're going to be able to create two insect creature tokens. Uh, there's Brood Hatch that whenever it's dealt combat damage, you're going to be able to create that many insect tokens. And so one of the nice things about, you know, with Brood Hatch, Hornet Nest, and Saber Ants is these are cards that you can just sit back and leave on defense. You know, you can get these cards down if your opponent decides to swing into you. You know, if somebody sends in a 10-10 at Hornet Nest, um, they're going to shake the hornet nest. You're going to end up with a lot of insect tokens on the battlefield. Same thing with saber ants and brood hatch. And so it's nice to run some of these more kind of offensive insect tribal stuff in here. But with these three cards right here, it makes it really easy for you just to kind of sit back, you know, put some egg counters on these creatures, wait for somebody to swing in. And then, you know, kick over an ant pile, kick over a hornet's nest, and end up with a lot of uh, insect tokens on the battlefield. Um, outside of the token insects, we do have a lot of just universal good stuff insects. So Xanid Swarm, that's going to allow us to have some sort of protection during the combat step. Um, Blex is going to give us that plus one, plus one to a lot of our insect tokens. And then if we're running spiders or snakes or any other sort of spooky Halloween creatures or swamp creatures, Blex is going to give them a plus one, plus one bonus. And the Springleaf Avenger, this is going to be a good way to get the ninjutsu to basically just kind of get that graveyard recursion. If you're building some sort of Jun two-for-one style deck, uh, Springleaf Avenger is going to be on insect tribal theme, and it's going to allow you to kind of create that loop of getting stuff back out of the graveyard with that combat step. Um, we do have Sky Lasher, which is going to be Flash, Protection from Blue, and Reach, you know, not the best insect out there, but hey, it's got a lot of keywords on there that does help out. Um, Agitator Ant, at the beginning of your end step, each player may put two plus one counters on a creature they control. If they do, um, that creature is goaded. So this is a wonderful way to kind of stir up stuff at the table with Agitator Ant. And then with Mortipede, uh, this may not seem like that good of an effect, but if you're trying to go for an alpha swing, maybe you're going for something like Triumph of the Hordes, or you're going for a huge Crater Hoof style effect. Uh, with, Mortar, uh, with Mortipede, that three mana activation of making sure everybody blocks Mortipede, that is a wonderful way to make sure that the coast is clear uh, for the rest of your creatures to swing in. Um, some of the other utility insects, we got Loam Larva, which is going to enter the battlefield, search your library for a basic land card, put it on top. Um, Swarm Yard, this is a wonderful, wonderful addition to this deck. It's going to allow us to regenerate our commander uh, for basically nothing at all, and that is a very, very strong card. So no matter what sort of build you go for, Swarm Yard is definitely an auto-include in there. And with Invasive Species, this is going to allow us to return stuff back to the hand. So if we have something with of the battlefield effects just having that in your tribal build of being able to return something to your hand is a good thing to go for um nantuko elder that's going to be a mana dork in insect uh, with Husk, that's going to be a Sack Outlet. It is important in a deck like this to run some sort of Sack Outlet, whether it's protecting our commander or sacrificing a creature that has an egg counter on it. And at the same time, it is an insect, so it stays on the insect tribal thing. And then with Tunneling Geopede, you know, this is a really good way to get this down, have some sort of just 3-2 body out there, and then slowly chip away at our opponent's life total with that one damage with each landfall that we're going for. Um, if we are looking for some sort of recursion, there's Cockroaches in Magic. Uh, we got Brood of Cockroaches. Whenever it's put into a graveyard, pay one life and return it to your hand at the end of turn. So you can see that if we swing in with zero, we have cockroaches on the battlefield, which is the card. Uh, we go for the husk activation, we sacrifice brood of cockroaches, we get that card draw, we get that insect token, then we pay that one life, return it back to our hand, recast it. So that's going to allow you to kind of complete that token card draw cycle with some sort of sack outlet out there. So you do want to have some sort of recursion in there, and with the cockroaches it does help out. Um, same thing with endless cockroaches, whenever it dies, return it to its owner's hand, so it does cost three mana. So having this recursion allows you to, you know, if there's not a lot of action at the table, you can at least start to put some of those counters on your own stuff. Stuff, uh, get a card draw and a token and be good to go and then there's scut swarm which is just one of the best creatures out there in magic you know even if you're not building an insect tribal deck i would put this in there uh, whenever land enters the battlefield under your control create a one one green insect creature token then if you control six or more you get to create a token that's a copy of scut swarm instead this is going to be one of the best ways to build up a high volume of insects so even if you're not going insect tribal um, this is one of the best ways to make sure that you can get insects on the battlefield because just Getting a 1-1 body with every landfall that you make, it's going to add up over the course of a commander game. 
Now, one of the other ways that you can definitely take a zero build, because flying in haste is a very good thing to have in a commander, is you can really build a pretty solid uh, Voltron style deck. Now, if you've never built a Voltron deck, you want to make sure that you just have a lot of different abilities spread out across your equipment. So with Sword of the Animus, it's gonna allow us to get lanes on the battlefield. Um, Swiftfoot Boots is gonna give us some very nice protection. Um, haste normally matters in your commander, but since our commander has haste, it didn't really matter, but that Hexproof will matter. And then something like Mask of Memory, you know, we want our commander to make combat damage, so whenever it does combat damage, you can draw two cards and discard a card. Um, that's a wonderful way to get some card advantage going over the course of the game. Now we do have a commander that cares about removing creatures from the battlefield. So for something like Uzama's Jitsu, and Sword of Fire and Ice. Um, with Uzama's Jitte, when it deals combat damage, we get two charge counters on there. We can use those charge counters to either buff our commander for plus two, plus two. Uh, we can gain two life or target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. Um, if you start connecting with the Uzama's Jitte and start getting those charge counters going, it is a very, very hard thing to deal with at the table for the other people out there because being able to just remove a charge counter from Jitte and make a creature get minus one minus one that is a very very powerful effect to have so I highly recommend Uzama's Jitte especially if you're trying to get egg counters on your opponent's creatures and go for that activated or that triggered ability whenever that creature dies. Um, Helm of the Host that is a wonderful way to get extra copies of zero on the battlefield and get extra uh, uh, egg tokens going that, or the egg counters going now, there's no better way to get that going and that's kind of going to remind you of a horror movie is you get multiple copies of zeros out there. And the Sword of the Ice is pretty much the same thing with Uzama's Jitte. That's going to be two damage to something and you get a card advantage. Uh, that's something that you do want to go for. As far as some of the kind of heavier hitter uh, Voltron pieces, Black Blade Reforge, we're building a Jun deck, so we're probably going to be ramping a lot. Um, so being able to get that plus one, plus one for each land that you control, that's going to be a very good effect. Uh, it doesn't give our creature, our commander, trample, but since it does have flying, and there's a lot of times where somebody doesn't have an answer for flying, you get Black Blade or forge on your commander and you're good to go um stone forge masterwork that's going to be a really good way to kind of get that tribal bonus for building insect tribal um equip creature gets plus one plus one for each other creature uh, you control that shares a creature type with it and then hero's blade this is just a good voltron equipment you can get this down on turn two uh, once we go for our commander it's going to auto equip onto zero and you're going to be good to go so swinging in with a plus three plus two in addition to zero um, that is going to be a very very good voltron effect some other odd and in kind of Voltron pieces, you do want to make sure that you have some sort of unblockable way for Zira. Um, key to the city, this is a wonderful way to, even if you're not building Voltron, um, this is one of the nice ways just to make sure that you can connect with Zira and get those egg tokens going. So with key to the city, you just discard a card and then up to one target creature can't be blocked this turn. Um, whenever it becomes untapped, you get to pay that two mana, you can draw a card. So that's kind of a way for you to get around that card advantage loss uh, with key to the city. But there will be some times where Zira can attack and you can't get that activated ability going and so having key to the city is a wonderful way to make sure that's unblocked uh, rogues passage four mana a target creature can't be blocked that is expensive but once you get into the late game of commander it is a really nice thing to have rogues passage and especially in a voltron deck you have all your equipment on zero it just can still be blocked it can be dealt with being able to pay four mana to make it unblockable that is a wonderful thing to have and then also just running equipment that gives it unblockable equip creature can't be blocked except by wall so Unless Arcades is out there or something like that, Prowler's Ham is going to be one of the best ways to make sure that's an unblockable. Um, typically, when you do build Voltron, if you're not going Enchantress, you want to stay away from Auras because once our commander goes back to the command zone, that Aura goes to the graveyard. Uh, but there's some really good uh, some Voltron pieces out there in the Auras. We have uh, a Fire. Um, sacrifice an untapped creature. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn. So right there, uh, we have a Sack Outlet to sacrifice any of our creatures that have an egg counter on it. Then Sacrifice Enchanted Creature all creatures you control get plus two plus zero until end of turn uh, so with this particular aura it's actually really nice because it gives us a sack outlet to buff up zero which you know that's a very hive mind effect right there being able to give zero plus two plus zero then if we have a lot of insect tokens out there for whatever reason we can just sacrifice zero and give all of our creatures plus two plus zero so that's something to kind of keep in mind if you want to build some aura stuff and um, with alpha status enchanted creature gets plus two plus two for each other creature that shares a creature type with it so that's going to be another style you know kind of like that last piece of equipment that tribal bonus and with bravado enchanted creature gets plus one plus one for each other creature that you control so you can imagine if you have a fire alpha status bravado out there on just these three cards on zero um you've got a really big zero and especially with that plus one plus one bonus for each creature that you control then that tribal bonus you know you can build some sort of jund enchanter deck if you wanted to and these are going to be some of the really good aura pieces uh, that you can run in your deck
No matter what sort of build you're going for with Zero, one of the things you do want to keep in mind is some sort of way to kind of amplify the tokens. So we have Parallel Lives, Doubling Season, and Primal Vigor. Um, these are all basically going to give you twice the amount of tokens that you'd normally create. Uh, with Primal Vigor, that's going to give us uh, access to extra plus one counters. And then with Doubling Season, it has that same counters ability, but... With doubling season, if you're new to magic, if you're new to commander, uh, doubling season amplifies the amount of loyalty counters that with a planeswalker enters the battlefield with. So with doubling season on the battlefield, let's say we have a planeswalker that is a five starting loyalty. Uh, with doubling season on the battlefield, that planeswalker enters the battlefield and it enters with 10 loyalty. And there's a lot of times where you can just immediately go for an ultimate with doubling season on the battlefield. So you can definitely run these in your Zira deck to give access to extra tokens, but if you're building some sort of super fin Zira deck, uh, doubling season kind of almost gives you this alternative win condition for the deck, and that's going to bring us to super friends. And one of the nice things about running a planeswalker package in your Zira build is that planeswalkers kind of do three for one for your actual commander. So one of the things with Zira, Zira wants creatures on the battlefield to stick around so we can put egg counters on them. Um, a lot of people are going to deal with planeswalkers by swinging during the combat steps. So it's going to keep the creatures on the battlefield it kind of opens us up to get those egg counters on our opponent's creatures if we want to do that um the other thing is that once you run some variation of planeswalkers in a deck like this it's going to help alleviate the heat from zero so as soon as you get a planeswalker out there the threat priority is pretty much going to be the planeswalker stopping that ultimate and that's going to keep zero on the battlefield it's going to keep you those egg counters going and then once they deal with the planeswalker you know you're fine you got to get egg counters on there and the other thing that a lot of these planeswalkers will do for a deck like this is they they complete what we're trying to do in this deck and that's getting a token on the battlefield uh, getting some sort of incremental card draw value and then threatening some sort of win condition so you have Tevesh uh, Doom of Fools and um, that's going to give us those creature token creation and we can sacrifice and draw a card and um, we're going to have a lot of planeswalkers on this screen so I'm just kind of skim over them really quick the main thing I want you to leave this this particular slide with is that planeswalkers do have a home in Zira um, so with Grist we're going to be able to get that token creation and also with uh, with uh, with doubling season out there Grist is going to immediately be able to ultimate as soon as it comes down with double season out there uh, we got spider queen which is going to give us that card advantage in that insect token creation um, Doretti is a wonderful way to get insect uh, get uh, construct tokens on the battlefield for the egg counters and we can use that minus one to destroy an artifact or creature uh, fray lease is a wonderful way to get tokens on the battlefield and keep artifacts and enchantments in control uh, minskin boo uh, this is a wonderful way to keep getting that repeated token effect that we can put that egg counter on there then the plus one ability is going to give us three counters on a creature and it gains trample or haste and so we are missing trample with our particular command of zero so that plus one ability is really going to allow us to kind of push that voltron aspect and at the same time have something to do uh, with that token out there you can also run vraska a lot of these vraskas almost ultimate when they come down so with vraska relic seeker and vraska the unseen with doubling season uh, with vraska the unseen it enters the battlefield you can immediately ultimate then you end up with six one one black assassin creature tokens that whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player that player loses the game so this is a fun way to, you know, it's not really necessarily helping us with the token creation or sacrificing creatures, but if you're running doubling season and you get Vrask of the Unseen down, you can end up with six assassin tokens to try to close the game out. That's a lot of fun. Uh, Vrask of Golgari Queen is going to be on, a little bit more on theme of what we're trying to do in the deck, and that's sacrificing a permanent to gain a life and get a card advantage. And then with Vrask of Relic Seeker, that's going to give us that token creation and at the same time kind of keep our opponents, uh, you know, artifacts, creatures, and enchantments in check uh, with that minus ability um, some other good stuff in here Liliana the last hope that that minus one ability there's a lot of times to where if we put an egg counter on one toughness creature that minus one is going to make a big difference uh, Nissa voice of Zendikar is going to give us access to putting plus one counters across all of our creatures for that minus two and then with Liliana Dreadhorde this is one that we have some sort of board wipe protection that whenever a creature we control dies we get to go for a card draw then we just start making zombie tokens making zombie tokens and then we can use that minus four with our extra insect tokens to make sure that we kind of stay ahead on the amount of creatures that we do have out there one of the other fun ways you can take a zero build is building a deck that cares about creatures dying so we have access to stuff like morbid opportunists whenever one or more creatures die we get to draw a card um, that's gonna only get a trigger once per turn but as that happens as we pass the turn around the table it's gonna be a lot of card advantage uh, we also have access to blood artist style effects we have poison tip archer uh, whenever another creature dies each opponent loses one life and then with piglius plunderer uh, whenever a creature we control we get a treasure token so what we're 
we're trying to do is just basically get some sort of value whenever a creature dies. So we have access to Mayhem Devil, uh, whenever a player sacrifices a permanent, that's one damage we need target. Uh, Mazarak, whenever a player sacrifices a permanent, we get a plus one counter on each creature that we control with Mazarak. Um, that's really going to allow us to amplify our board state with those plus one counters when people are cracking fetch lands, different things like that. And with Mahadi, um, that's going to give us a treasure token for each creature that died this turn. So um, we don't have the have the we don't have to have the entire deck be some sort of aristocrat deck but if you just build a lot of stuff that cares about creatures dying you can end up building this really nice value machine um, we also have access to cards like diabolic intent so we can sacrifice a creature with an egg count on it go for a tutor get a card draw and get an insect token and a tutor with diabolic intent um, evolutionary leaps can allow us to sacrifice a creature until we hit a creature it's going to go to our hand and then yagmoth that's a wonderful way to sacrifice our creatures that have egg counters on it and put minus one minus one counters on creatures that our opponents control that may have some sort of egg counter on there to get that card advantage and then with the double uh double black ability ability uh, we do have discard a card and proliferate i'm not entirely sure how proliferate interacts with the egg counters um that's something you do need to check with the judge and i want to say that if it just has even if it has one egg counter or 10 egg counters i want to say that you only get one card draw and one insect token i could be wrong uh, but definitely check with the judge on that but yeah as far as the proliferate ability i think that just basically just you only get the the card draw and the insect token and then if you're running some sort of de uh, deck that cares about creatures dying you want to have some sort of recursion uh, blood gas reassembling skeleton bitter blossom you just want to have some sort of way to have creatures on the battlefield very cheaply to make sure you can sacrifice those creatures and get some sort of extra value um just like the tutor spell we were talking about there's a lot of ways that we can sacrifice a creature and get some card advantage uh deadly dispute we're going to be able to draw two cards and get a treasure token when we sacrifice a creature or an artifact uh village rights is going to be two card draw with a uh, creature sacrifice and then plumb the forbidden this is one of the best ways to end with a ton of card draw as initial cost to cast a spell sacrifice one or more creatures you get to copy the spell for each creature sacrifice this way we draw a card and lose one life um so plumb the forbidden Forbidden. Even if you're not building some sort of aristocrat or dying deck, um, Plum the Forbidden is a wonderful way to cash in all of your insect tokens for some card draw. You do lose some life, but uh, that card draw is definitely worth it. If we're still kind of hitting on the theme of creatures dying, we have Death Reap Ritual, which is going to give us some extra card advantage whenever a card dies. Same thing with the Middle Enchantment, and same thing with Moldervine Reclamation. We're going to be able to get card advantage whenever a creature dies. One of the other things that you do want to keep in mind in building your deck is running some sort of cheap way to have mass targeted removal you know it is nice to go for a board wipe but it's going to get rid of our commander um cards like fire covenant and riveter's charm uh, you want to have some sort of way to kind of target a particular commander that may have a particular creature that has an egg counter so with fire covenant um as an additional cost to cast this spell you may pay x life uh, fire covenant is going to deal x damage as you choose among any number of target creatures so with fire covenant that's going to allow us to start putting egg counters on different creatures we can pay a lot of life and have some sort of mass board wipe removal but it's targeted and it's going to give us that insect token creation and give us that card draw um attrition this is going to be a wonderful card for your zero deck for a black man activation sacrifice a creature destroy target non-black creatures so that's a wonderful way to kind of make sure that you can pop one of your opponent's creatures that have the egg counters on there and then with riveter's charm target opponent sacrifices a creature or a planeswalker with the highest mana value so if you have have riveter's charm you're putting an egg counter on one of their high mana value creatures that's going to allow you to make sure that that particular creature does get removed from the battlefield and you get that extra ability of being at that card advantage and a token um same thing with comet storm phyrexian purge and dictative erebos uh, comet storm is going to allow us to go for that targeted removal at the battlefield and the phyrexian purge um this is going to be the same thing you know pay three life per target destroy any number of target creatures that's going to be the same thing with fire covenant you know there's a lot of times where you're spreading these egg counter out being able to specifically target those creatures with the egg counters is going to be a great way to make sure that you don't get rid of a lot of your value creatures on the battlefield and then something like dictate of erebos whenever a creature you control dies each opponent sacrifices a creature um, this is going to be a great way to make sure that no creatures stay on the battlefield and especially if you're uh, sacrificing your creatures and you get egg counters on your opponent's creatures that's a wonderful way to make sure that creatures don't stick around and um, one of the other ways to kind of amplify zero is going in with the extra combat steps we have seize the day untap target creature 
there's an additional combat phase and it does have the flashback ability so this is a good way to kind of get those extra uh, egg counters going um, aggravated assault is a wonderful way to get this down and for five mana per turn you can get that extra combat step and the breath of fury this is a really unique way to get those extra zero triggers going uh, whatever enchanted creature deals combat damage to player sacrifice it attach it to a creature you control untap those creatures there's an additional combat phase so this is a good way to kind of get the breath of fury going you know if you have a lot of insect tokens out there put it on one of your creatures it swings in you sacrifice it keep that breath going uh, that's a wonderful way to get a lot of those uh, those egg counters going um, you also have access to some planeswalkers that give you extra combat step with that ultimate that's going to be very good with our commander uh, carlock that's going to be another way to get the extra combat stamp and same thing with morag you know get the lands entering the battlefield our uh, creature is going to get plus one plus zero and really kind of help off those amplifying uh, those amplifying our creature tokens so uh, you don't have to run a lot of extra combat steps in there but if you really want to amplify the amount of egg counters that you're getting in your zero deck uh, extra combat is definitely a way you can take that now as far as some of the good baseline stuff in here Cheville is going to hit on the getting a counter and getting some sort of extra value uh, we get that bounty counter on there a uh, generous patron is going to give us access to card draw whenever we put a counter on our opponent's creature and then a uh, cool wrath knight um, a creatures your opponents control with counters on them can't attack or block this is going to be a very very powerful creature in your deck you get this down you get an egg counter in your creature they basically it's just some sort of passivism effect uh, once you have a counter on that so it's a wonderful way to kind of keep those creatures on lockdown um, we also have strionic resonator lithoform engine and wolfgar um, these are all ways that we can amplify our our commander's triggered ability of getting an egg counter on there so if you want to run them in there you can um, it can be a little bit pricey to do that but this is a nice way outside of the extra combat route to make sure that you're amplifying those egg token act or not activation but those triggered abilities and then cards like chatterfang you know that once we get those insect tokens on the battlefield we get an extra green squirrel token um skull clamp if you've never built a skull clamp deck when you have a deck that has a lot of one ones in there you almost always put skull clamp in there because whenever that creature dies you get to draw two cards and that is a wonderful wonderful way to end up with a lot of card advantage and then we also have a very fun card in radiant performer uh, whenever it enters the battlefield if you cast it from your hand choose target spell or ability that targets only one permanent or player copy that spell or ability for each that it could target so basically once we get the zero trigger going we flash in radiant performer we copy that ability that's going to put egg counters on every single thing at the table so this is a wonderful way to get that repeated effect if you have some sort of way to bounce radiant performer you can certainly do that uh, but that's going to be one way that you can spread out that entire ability across the entire table. And last but not least, some of the utility enchantments that you can run in no matter what sort of build you're going for. Uh, Meat Hook Massacre, that's going to be a good way to make sure you can kind of clear up some of the creatures at the table and then get some sort of bonus when creatures die. Um, Rhythm of the Wild, creature spells you control can't be countered, and then they have Riot. Rhythm of the Wild is a very, very strong commander in a creature-heavy deck. So if you're going Insect Tribal, I highly recommend Rhythm of the Wild. And then with Anger, you know, Anger is one of those cards that you can get it down get an egg uh, token on it and then once it goes to the graveyard all of your creatures have haste um, we are going to have creatures entering the battlefield so you want to have some sort of way to make sure that you can take advantage of that um, impact tremors and profiles that's a wonderful way to have that extra damage as a creature enters the battlefield and then with goblin bombardment we can sacrifice those tokens deal one damage to a creature or player and so it's just nice to have access to a sack outlet and a damage source all in one card and then as far as green goes as far as entering the battlefield season of growth that's going to be a wonderful way to get scry per turn and then whenever you cast a spell that targets a creature we get to draw a card so that's something that the draw card not super good but as far as the end of the battle for the scry that's the main thing that we're looking at uh, awakening zone that's going to give us access to things that we can keep putting egg counters on and then we can sacrifice those spawn tokens to add one colorless mana to our mana pool so as far as what build you're going for with zero just adding awakening zone to your deck and then having a sack outlet on your own token creatures that have egg counters on it it's a wonderful way to give you ramp and get life gain and some card advantage. And then Path of Discovery, whenever a creature enters the battlefield, we go for the Explorer option. So having some sort of, you know, enchantment or something that cares about creatures entering the battlefield is definitely something that you can include in your Zira deck. But that is going to be it for the deck deck. We covered a lot of different ways you can take Zira. The main thing with Zira is get out there and have some fun. There's just a lot of different ways you can build it. You can go Super Friends, Insect Tribal, Jun Control, uh, you know, a little mix of everything. One of the nice things about a commander like Zira is that you 
you can just try out a lot of different strategies all in the same deck and just kind of see which one you want to you know let's say you have a couple planeswalkers in there and you like how the planeswalkers handle and you want to make it more of a super friends deck go for it maybe you play it and you like some of the insects in there you know go a little bit heavier in insect tribal and one of the nice things about zero is that this is a very flowy deck you know you can change how it operates because really we're just getting an egg counter on something so there's just a lot of different ways you can take this deck um, if there's some sort of way you're taking this build that I didn't cover in this video hop in the comments I like to read different play styles and different build styles and it also helps other people building this deck uh, you know kind of get different ideas but that is gonna be it for the video uh, happy building and if you enjoyed this video uh, like and subscribe thanks bye